when I think about biology and the brain, I always think, hey, so this thing had one goal, which was to survive long enough so that the bearer would reach reproductive maturity and pass on the genes yeah. to the next generation. And my view has long been that that's a radically different goal than figuring out the true nature of reality. In fact, moreover, my view has long been that those of our forebears who may have been prescient and knew about the strangeness of time that came, say, from Einstein, when they were out there on the plains thinking about time dilation and general relativity, they, they got eaten. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't focused on the goal, which was survival. Right. And, and, and so when you say we have to take seriously that sort of the past is gone and the future is yet to be, I wonder why you say that. Yeah. So I say that because unlike the, our forebears that were thinking about quantum mechanics, they would be, um, and fortunately, and same with general relativity, fortunately Einstein was not eaten. Um, but with time, um, it is critical for survival because, as I said, the brain is a device that stores information about the past, that's memory, in order to predict the future, and that's what you're doing. So I think the question that we have to try to resolve is whether um, the temporal component of, of, of our conscious experience is real or not. Let me try to give you an analogy, um, another one, in terms of color. Okay. Yeah, sure. We know that in physics, color doesn't really exist, right. what, what we have is um, wavelength of electromagnetic radiation. The brain, the color is evolution's hack to build a spectrometer. And, um, and it's imperfect, but it's pretty damn good, right? So Newton used his perception of color to make very valid influences about the physics of, of light. Now, I think by the same reason, Color is adaptive because it tells us about, it's correlated with the real world. I think our feeling of the flow of time wouldn't have evolved if it weren't correlated with the real world from an evolutionary perspective. Now, my question to you, Brian, is the following. If an omniscient being came down and, to you personally and um, assured you that the past, present, and future are different, that the present is in some sense more real than the future or past. Obviously, we know that absolute present doesn't exist because that's been well tested, because we know clocks change at different speeds, but that doesn't really say that the present is different from, is not fundamentally different from the past or future. So if that being came to you and said that, would you have to go in there and rewrite any of the laws of physics, or could you still use the same laws? Well, well it's, a, it's a good question, and actually it's a relevant one, because I have been visited by that <laughs> omniscient being. So, so, so here's my view. My view is that much of what we're talking about tonight is absolutely vital from a human scale perspective, because we're beings that live in the world, and we want to have a deeper understanding of this quality that is with us every moment of every day. There's barely a sentence that I can utter that doesn't have a temporal quality in it. So it's so vital to everything that we do that we want to understand it more deeply. From the standpoint of fundamental physics, much of what we're talking about just doesn't matter. If you look at the equations of relativity or quantum mechanics, you can use those equations to make predictions about what will happen in various experiments without having to commit to whether the past is gone or the exactly. future is yet to be. So, so it's an interesting state of affairs where I don't think that I would need to rewrite the laws of physics at all, given this information, assuming that it was true, because ultimately this is a layer of human interpretation that's sitting upon the more fundamental understanding. Now, that's not to say that our current understanding down here is the final story. I don't think that it is. My guess is that there will come a point, and it's starting to bubble up right now in fundamental physics, where we'll recognize that time is not as basic to the laws as we once thought. There's, there's evidence to suggest and this is things coming from quantum gravity and string theory, which are certainly on the edge of speculation. But there is reason to suspect 
that time is something that emerges from a more fundamental starting point. The analogy that I like to use is temperature. So we all know what it means when something's hot or something's cold, right? Totally intuitive. We learned many decades ago that there's a more fundamental underpinning to that, which is when something's hot, its molecules are moving fast. When it's cold, its molecules are moving slow. And temperature simply is a measure of that average kinetic motion. So that says that temperature emerges from a more basic starting point having to do with the motion of atoms. Now, I, my belief, and this is not iconic to me, there are many in my field who feel the same way, that there is an analogous notion of atoms, but not for matter, but for time. That there's some more basic fundamental ingredient that when it be, is in the right configuration, time emerges. But when it's not in that configuration, there isn't even a conception of time. Yeah. And that's why these ideas are sort of very high level, however much they matter to us as human beings, I don't think they matter to the fundamental laws of physics. Mm -hmm.